In this lecture, it's finally time to start drawing the map. Everything we need is ready. The goal of this lecture is to begin drawing 3D objects into the scene. The tile map packages we've installed can create a grid where objects can be drawn on. Let's give it a try. In the hierarchy, right click to open the menu. Under 2D object, select Tile Map Rectangular. This option will create a game object with a component called Grid. If we look closely at the grid, the orientation is incorrect. The grid is going up and down. You can verify the direction of the grid by comparing it with the Scene Gizmo. As you can see, the Y axis represents up and down. Our grid is oriented against the Y axis. Our players will not be climbing the map. The terrain should be flat. The orientation can be adjusted by modifying the grid component. In the inspector, set the Cell Swizzle option to XZY. The grid has become flat. Let's rename the name of the game object to Terrain Grid. Perfect! We now have a flat surface for drawing the terrain. Let's adjust the scene's camera by clicking on the Y-axis cone from the Scene Gizmo. This adjustment will give us an aerial view of the grid. Before drawing on the grid, we should find the center of the grid. This step is completely optional. You can draw a map anywhere in the world. However, developers like to use the 0, 0, 0 coordinates as a reference point. These coordinates are considered to be the center of the world. Using them as a reference can make game development easier. While having the grid selected, let's look at the position. As you can see, the grid has coordinates 0, 0, 0. Let's switch to the Select tool from the scene. The great thing about the Select tool is that the gizmo is always centered on the game object. Since the grid is positioned at the center of the world, so will the Select tool's gizmo. Here's what I want you to do. Adjust the scene's camera directly above the center of the world. Great! When we start drawing the tiles, the tiles should be within the proximity of the center of the grid. Once again, this step is optional. However, establishing the center of the world can make it easier to figure out where things are positioned in the world. Using the 0, 0, 0 coordinates is a common practice. The grid is ready, and our camera is positioned above the grid. Let's look at the hierarchy. Typically, we would have a single game object. However, the tile map package has created nested game objects. The grid game object acts as a container for tile maps. Multiple tile maps can be added to a grid. This feature can be useful for layering multiple objects over one another. By default, a single tile map was generated, but we're allowed to add more. For this lecture, we're going to have a single tile map. Select the tile map game object. Let's rename it to Beach Tile Map. The next step is to draw the tiles. Under the Window menu, select the 2D Tile Map Palette option. The Tile Map Palette window becomes available after installing the Tile Map packages. This package provides a complete suite of tools for drawing tiles. This window provides options for adjusting the brush that we can use to draw tiles on the map. Let's merge the window with the Inspector window. Game objects can be drawn on the grid by using a brush. First, we need to configure the brush to use our game objects. At the bottom of the Tile Map window, we can change the brush. The settings for the brush may be hidden. Let's drag these settings to the top of the window. There's a drop-down for changing the brush type. The default brush option is for 2D objects. However, our tiles are 3D game objects. We can switch the type to Game Object Brush. This option will allow us to use 3D game objects. Next, we can assign a game object to the brush. Before doing so, we should convert the prefab models into prefabs. The reason is simple. As we learned, prefab models do not support additional components. In a future lecture, we're going to need additional components. To save time, we should convert the prefab models into prefabs for component support. 
In the Assets directory, create a new folder. The name of the folder should be called Tiles. To keep our project organized, we're going to keep the model separate from the prefabs. This folder is not mandatory. I just like to keep my project neat and tidy. Next, let's go to the Game Assets slash Terrain directory. Search for the Ground Grass Tile. Drag this object into the hierarchy. Afterward, let's reset the Transform component by right-clicking on the component from the inspector. Select Reset. Resetting the object before doing anything else is considered good practice. Having random values can cause issues. Afterward, drag the object from the hierarchy to the Tiles folder. Select the original prefab option. Lastly, we can delete the object from the hierarchy. Great! We've got a prefab. The name of the object is incorrectly named. This tile will be used for drawing the beach. Let's rename it to Beach Tile. Let's start drawing the tiles. Back in the Tile Palette window, open the Cells option. The Cells option represents the game objects that are stored in the brush. We only need one cell. Inside the Element 0 option, we can configure the game object settings for this cell. There's an option called Game Object. Let's use our game object by dragging it from the Project window to the input for the Game Object option. Alternatively, you could have clicked on the button to the right. This button will open a window for selecting a game object from our game. However, it can be challenging to find the game object from the list of objects. I prefer to drag and drop. The next step is to enable the brush. At the top of the Tile Palette window, there's a button called Paint with Active Brush. Click on it to enable the brush. One more thing before you start drawing. Directly under these buttons, there's an option called Active Tile Map. The brush will add game objects to the scene. It needs to know where the game objects can be stored. Opening the drop-down reveals a list of possible locations. In our case, the game objects should be stored under the Beach Tile Map game object. Make sure this game object is selected from the drop-down. Time to draw. Let's start clicking on the grid to add objects. For this game, the size of our grid will be 22 by 22. Make sure you're drawing around the center of the world. As long as you're close, you're good to go. I'm going to draw the outer layer. Next, I'm going to add two more inner layers. Perfect! You may be wondering, why are we drawing the outer layer of the map? It's to be efficient. The whole island won't be a beach. The inner island will have an elevated terrain with grass, trees, and flowers. The player will not be able to see this portion of the map. I don't think there's a point in drawing the entire beach. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry. In future lectures, we're going to continue working on the map. It'll become clear as we keep working on the map. Pat yourself on the back. We've successfully drawn the beach for our game. Just to make sure, use the scene's camera to move around the map. Make sure there aren't gaps or awkward positioning. As long as the objects are positioned tightly against one another, you can consider the map complete. In the next lecture, let's begin modifying the appearance of our beach with textures.